Well, um, good uh, morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am Ash Steenbock. I am here to present to you this morning or this afternoon or whenever you're going to watch this. I know some of your teenagers still 2 o'clock in the morning on your phone. Mm. But okay, this is for a very, very good cause. I'm going to talk to you today about pronouns. So this is for grade 7 home language and first additional language. If I make a mistake, please don't get angry at me. It's very, very strange not standing in front of kids, but standing in front of a camera. So, here is my lesson. Are you ready for the lesson? Now, uh, what is pronouns? Long, long ago, you had some nouns, and they were extremely good at the sport they played. They played rugby, they played soccer, and they played netball. So they were absolute, you know, to the extreme, perfect athletes. And then one day, a scout came, and he saw these nouns playing, let's say rugby, he saw these nouns playing, and then they he told them, you know what, you don't have to study an academic career, you can actually become professional players, professional nouns. And then the nouns turn to professional nouns. So now we call them pronouns. That's the end of my lesson. Thank you very much, gentlemen, ladies, gentlemen. Have a good afternoon. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Forget about that story. Ne? Forget about that story. But, um, uh, but let's use sport. Let's use sport. Because I think sport can help us to explain uh, what pronouns exactly is, more or less. Let's use that example about sport. But forget about that joke. Don't tell your teacher. You know, in every sport, you've got subs. Now, the substitutes, we call them subs. The substitutes, you know, they are not on the felt. They are not busy playing. They're sitting on the bench. Sometimes people look down at these substitutes. They think, oh, it's, you know, it's not, it's the B team or the C team guy sitting there. And the real players are on, on the felt. The real players are on the grass. But, you know, there's a lot of reasons why a team has substitute players. There's certain dynamics that the coach is working on. Um, there's a certain play that he planned. And a certain player fit, fits in those plays. Other players, they don't fit, so they have to sit on the bench. They are substitute players. They are the subs. Sometimes one of the main players uh, gets injured, and he becomes or she becomes a sub that sits on the bench. So we must never look at these substitute players and think, you know what, these are the B or C or D or E or G or whatever team. These are the players that are not so good. The players that are the best they are the ones that are on the, on the felt. That is not always so. Sometimes a coach during a match, I know rugby a lot, and um, for those of you that watched um, the Manchester Liverpool match, you see why I would rather watch rugby. Um, Liverpool won us 5 0, so I'll rather watch rugby only from now on. So, those of you that, that, that watch rugby, knows that in the last September, last month, uh, we had a very, very interesting, very, very interesting matches going on. Um, unfortunately, the Springboks, who, who is the World Cups, unfortunately, they, wa they lost the first two matches, um, except for Argentina. But when they went down to Australia and New Zealand, they lost to Aus Australia twice. Oof. And then the third time, they lost to uh, the, the All Blacks. Oh, it was heart-wrenching. And then the All Blacks, obviously, they won that series. But the last match was for, for us about pride. was really for us about pride. So the last match, the Springboks played against the All Blacks, and we really needed this win. We really needed this win. And yet to the end of the match, you know what the coach did? He brought on two subs. He brought on Elton Jankis and Francois Stein. 
And they are, well, what's very interesting, remember I told you about subs. They are just as good as the other players, but people were starting to look down on them. But after bringing those two gentlemen up, the whole dynamics of the team changed. And I want to show you a clip. It's, uh, it's almost, the, almost to the end of the match. I'm going to show you a clip now of what happened when the coach brought up these subs, these substitutes on the felt. So let's look at this clip quickly. Okay, here goes the clip. Are you ready for the clip? Watch this. And then charging in is Jasper Visa, and the penalty advantage is here. Yankees snaps the drop goal. It's over! Springboks back in the lead. Elton Yankees with the drop goal. Wow. Wow, wow. Back to me, back to me. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? And in the end, uh, the Springboks won. Yeah, and uh, people were absolutely amazed. But like I said, uh, two substitutes were brought up. Alton Jankies and Franz Westein were brought up. And the whole dynamics of the match changed. And that is what exactly, more or less, pronouns are. Nouns we use every day. Nouns are the names of people and places. We use them in a sentence every day. But sometimes in a sentence or in a paragraph, it happens so that we have to bring on another word to replace those nouns. And those words are called pronouns. So it's like bringing a substitute on the felt and replacing another player. It makes the whole match very interesting and changes the dynamics of the match. So a pronoun, I want to say this again, a pronoun is as if it is a substitute sitting on the bench, the nouns are busy playing the match, and then to make the match a little bit, give it a, a spunk or give it a change or change of strategy, that's when we take a pronoun and put it on a felt and take off a noun to, make, to change our strategy or to make the match more interesting. Let me show you a written example. So now I have to change to the gooseneck. Let me just find the gooseneck. Is it this triangle, sir? This one. Okay. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. I haven't done this teaching for a, for a little while. So let's say we want to write um, a small little paragraph about KB. Let's say we want to write a small little paragraph about KB. So let's do the, a paragraph. KB lives... KB lives in Bloemfontein. KB lives in Bloemfontein. KB has two brothers. And KB has two cats. Now, uh, boys and girls, I don't know about you, but say for example, I were to write a whole paragraph writing just and using just KB. KB that, KB this, KB that, KB this, KB that. At the end of that paragraph, two things would have happened. Number one, you would have lost interest. And number two, you really wouldn't want to hear the name KB ever again in your whole life. So, that's where we use 
pronouns. Remember what I told you? Say this is our player. And now I'm going to put in a substitute. KB lives, oopsie, KB lives in Bloom Fontaine. She has two brothers and she has two cats. Doesn't that sound a little bit more better? So what I did is I took the player, our player is KB, and then I brought in a, a substitute, and the substitute is she. This is my substitute. This is my substitute. And this is this is what we call a pronoun. So as soon as you have a word like she that replaces a noun, whether it's a name of a person, a name of an institute, um, or perhaps even McDonald's, mm, they're making you hungry now, and you replace it with another word, it's called a pronoun. Let's look at the PowerPoint quickly, and we look at further explanations about pronouns. Now, in grade 7, um, we're only going to deal with three pronouns, whereas you actually have seven of them. So the first pronoun that we're going to discuss is um, personal pronouns. Thereafter, we're going to discuss possessive pronouns. And the last one is demonstrative pronouns. Those are the three major ones that you have to know before you write exams in one month or a test in the next couple of days. So, let's see. What is a personal pronoun? A personal pronoun, per personal pronoun replaces a name of a person, institute, animal, or an object. We share that with each other. Personal pronouns range from I, you, we, he, she. We used she earlier, do you remember? They and me, us, him, her, it, or then. But the question now is, where do we use personal pronouns a lot? Where are you going to use personal pronouns? Number one, um, where, when we combine two sentences with a conjunction. Let's look at the example. Jenny is very sick. Jenny went to the doctor. Now, that is how we wrote sentences when we were in grade one and when we were in grade two. We used short little sentences and it's called simple sentences. But later on in grade three, your teacher told you that one can combine these sentences using conjunctions and but those type of stuff. So using a conjunction, we combine the two simple sentences, but look carefully at the changes. Jenny is very sick and, Jen and she went to the doctor. So when we change a sentence like this, obviously the full stop disappeared and we put in a conjunction. This is the easiest one. There's a lot of them. We put in a conjunction, but then I didn't use Jenny again. I wanted to make the play or the game interesting. I used a pronoun. So when I replace the name with another word, the name of a person, this is a pronoun. She is one of our pronouns. The other place where we use pronouns is, we also use pronouns when we speak at length about something. So here's an example for you. Uh, if you have ever time and money 
please make a turn at the Johannesburg Zoo. It's a nice and beautiful place. So here's a small little paragraph about the Johannesburg Zoo that I wrote. Johannesburg Zoo is a great place to be and Johannesburg Zoo has a lot, has lots of different animals. Johannesburg Zoo keeps financially afloat by having lots of sponsors. Now ladies and gentlemen, imagine if I wrote the whole essay or a whole paragraph or a whole page and each time I just use Johannesburg Zoo, Johannesburg that, Johannesburg Zoo, Johannesburg that. Tonight when you go to bed, you'll be dreaming Johannesburg Zoo, Johannesburg Zoo, Johannesburg Zoo. But to make the play more interesting, to make the game more interesting, and to make the paragraph more interesting, what I did is I took out Johannesburg Zoo, the noun there, and the noun there. Um, they are almost what we call proper nouns, and I replaced them with personal pronouns. So let's you look here. Johannesburg Zoo is such a great place to be, and it has a lot. It has lots of different animals. They keep financially afloat by having lots of sponsors. So personal pro pronouns. Ladies and gentlemen, we use them just to make um, the reading easy on the eyes and to make paragraphs more interesting. So you, that's why you don't have to use somebody's name over and over and over and over again. My real name is Arthur Ashe. Now imagine if somebody had to write a whole essay about me and each time using my full name, Arthur Ashe. That would be very boring. So if I were to write, if I were to write uh, an essay about myself, if I were to write an uh, essay about myself, um, I, I would write, Arthur Ashe is 44 years old and he lives in Bloemfontein. Okay, let's go to the next type of pronoun that we have. The next one that we have is what we call a possessive pronoun. Now this one is one of the easiest ones. And I think this one is the one that you use most in your classroom. When somebody wants to grab your pencil case or somebody wants to fiddle in your pencil case, you grab it back and you say, this is mine, leave it alone. That is a possessive pronoun. But let's lead, read on the PowerPoint. Of all the pronouns, this is the most easiest one. Possessive pronouns shows ownership. When something belongs to someone, possessive pronouns are mine, yours, his, hers, ours, and uh, theirs, and yours. This is my laptop. It's mine. He offered his camera for money. Can you see these words here? mine it says that the laptop belongs to me this is a possessive pronoun also he tells me that this camera belong to this person so his is a possessive pronoun so that is very simple boys and girls as soon as something points to being somebody's property it is a possessive pronoun. That's the easy one. The next one, some people find this one very, very difficult. This is a demonstrative pronoun. Demonstrative pronouns show, shows where something is and also when you want to talk about a specific person or object. Demonstrative pronouns are that, those, these, this and here pointing fingers now uh, when i was young like you um, i remembered when my teacher taught me about demonstrative pronouns my teacher always told me it's the ones that you use when you're pointing at someone or something it's the ones that you use when you're pointing at someone let's look at some examples this bag 
is mine. So you're not talking about any bag in general. You are pointing about a specific bag. So can you just picture that? There's a boy standing in classroom and he's pointing at a school bag and he says, this bag is mine. So pronouns, demonstrative pronouns, are those nouns that we use when we're pointing to an object or when we're speaking about a specific ob object. What's interesting in this short little paragraph here is that here's our demonstrative pronoun, but here is also a possessive pronoun because it says the bag belongs to him. Uh, second example, that car drove over KB. Okay, so it's not any car that drove over KB. It's a specific car. So that's why we say that car. Can you just see that picture of a little boy or, or boy and a girl standing next to the road and there drives a car past as they point to that car. They say that car drove over KB. Pointing fingers. That, those, these, this, and here. So here's an example of here. <laughs> here is the pencil you borrowed me. Okay, so can you see this person is talking about a specific pencil? And it is as if this person is pointing to a pencil lying on the table. Not any pencil, but this pencil. The last one, those children are naughty. So here's a last example, those children are naughty. Can you again see two teachers standing outside of the classroom and the class walks by and the one teacher pointing to that class saying to the teacher next to him, those children are, knowing, are naughty. So just remember, demonstrative pronouns, that, those, these, this, the four T's, and an H, okay, and it's the ones that you use when you're talking about a specific car, a specific shoe. You're not talking about shoes in general. No, you're saying to your mom when you go to Edgar's or Truett's or wherever you shop, Total Sports, wherever you shop, you're saying, you're pointing with your finger and you say, Mommy, this shoe I want when I get a seven in English. Okay, so boys and girls, let's go back. Let's go back to the gooseneck. Let's go back to the gooseneck. I just want to show you something quickly. I just want to show you something. Some, some of you use this textbook, English for Success. Okay. Now at the back of English for Success, grade 7, there's not a lot of information about pronouns in the book. But if you look at the back of your book, you will see here's another explanation of all the pronouns that we have. Here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them I told you. And what is most important that you have to know? You have to know what is a personal pronoun, you have to know what is a possessive pronoun, and you have to know what are a demonstrative, what is a demonstrative pronoun. You see by demonstrative pronoun, this, that, these, those, pointing the finger, but they didn't put in, yeah, yeah is my book. You see I'm pointing the finger, yeah is my book. Also, and then if we go up, possessive pronoun, mine, yours, his, hers, its, ours, theirs. And the first one that we did is I, you, he, she, it, we, they, me, you, him, her, it, us, them. The pronoun, personal, the pronoun is a subject. She won the history prize. Or one can write KB won the history prize. But we take out KB, we take her from the field, from the sports field, we put on the substitute, and the substitute is she. 
Okay, so boys and girls, when we learn something, the best way is to always do an exercise of the words. Now, most of you received this handout from the department about uh, possessive pronouns, and we're going to do an exercise. Um, I think it's possessive pronouns, it was demonstrative pronouns, and it was personal pronouns. But there's only two exercises that we got in this handout from the department, and I want you to help me with these two exercises. So let's do this together. I know you are very far from me. Perhaps you can shout a little bit that your mommy can come and run in and say, what are you looking at on your phone? So let's do this together. Or I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to look at the answers, and then we mark together. Okay. The question is, underline the pronoun in the parenthesis that best completes its sentence. So when you get a question in exams that talks about completes each sentence, you know what that means? It means listen, listen. You know what I always tell the children in my class? There's two major, major rules of English. Number one, rule number one is always find the verb. If you find the verb, you can unlock anything in the sentence. The second rule of English is, English is a lot about how it sounds. So after writing a sentence, always read a sentence or read your essay and see how it sounds or listen to how it sounds. If something sounds funny, it's probably wrong. So when you get a question like this in the exam or the test, complete the sentence, that best complete the sentence, it's about how it sounds. Here, here we go. Let's see how I do as a teacher. Inali lends his skateboard to I or to me. I think, let me try me. I'm not sure, but let me try it. Should Erica and I or me meet you and her or she? Hmm, that's a difficult one. Let's try should Erica and I, I'm going to try I, meet you and her. Let me try her. Or do you think it's she? Let's say that again. Should Erica and I meet you and she? I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, okay, let me scrap this out. Let me scrap this out. I'm going to try she. Let me try she. Stacy and her or she making the scenery for the play. Stacy and her. Okay. I don't know what's this girl's name, but they replaced the girl's name with a personal pronoun. Okay. With a pronoun. Let's see. The teacher told Nancy and I, me, to work together. I think it's I. I used to babysit for Jane and he, him. I used to babysit for Jane and he. I used to babysit for Jane and him. I think it's him. Let's try him. Brad and me. Brad and I packed our suitcases for the for vacation. Brad and me. Let me try me. Let me try me. Let me try me. I met Joel and he in the library. I met Joel and him in the library. Ooh, that's a difficult one. Okay, let's make a question. I'm going to come back to that one. Uncle Jack brought gifts for Katrina and I or me. Hmm. Uncle Jack brought gifts for Katrina and me. I think it's me. The winner of the poetry contest was her. The winner of the poetry contest was she. What do you think, boys and girls? Which one is it? Let's take a guess. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. My daddy had a stinky toe. Okay, so it's this one. Daniel's pen pal sent a letter to him. He? Or him? No, I think it's him. It's him. So let's look. I brought, let me see, where is the answers? 
You see, it's not fair, ne? Teachers always have the answers with them. So that's page 28. Let's look at um, the answers. Okay, let's look at the answers. Inali lent his skateboard. Whoa, 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 whoa. Page 28. No, this doesn't look... Oh, here it is. Anali lends his skateboard to me. Okay, I was right. Yay! Number two. Should Erika and I... Yes, I was right. Meet you and her. Oh, no. I got that one wrong. Okay. Number three. Stacy and her... Yes! Where's my lollipop? Number four, the teacher told Nancy and I. Okay, that one I got. Number five, I used to babysit for Jane and him. Yes. No. Yes, that's right. Woo, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Number six, Brad and I, or me, packed our suitcases for vacation. What does the answer say? Number six says, I, oh no, Ash. Number seven, where's number seven? I met Joel and he or him in the library. What did I write? I wasn't sure. So let's see what the answer is. Him. Okay, so the answer is him. Number eight, Uncle Jack brought gifts for Katrina and me. I wrote Mia. Let's see number eight. Oh no. I got that one wrong. Okay, number nine. The winner of the poetry contest was she. Was her. Oh no. I got that one wrong too. Number ten. Daniel's pen pal sent a letter to him. Yes, I got that one right. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I got six out of ten. Whew. What do you think? I need to study some more. I need to study some more. Let's do another one. Maybe I'll do better in this one. You see, boys and girls, after you've studied, it's always good to see if you understand the work. Even if it's natural science or even if it's social science, you can ask your mom or your dad, your uncle, your brother to ask you a question and um, to see what you understand before you go write exams so that you know how much do you know. Okay, so here we go. Question number one. Okay, what does the question say? Underline each possessive pronoun. Here's an example. Tell them not to wear their hats inside. So the word there tells us these hats belong to them. Possessive, it tells us when something belongs to somebody. Okay, so let's look at question number one. Her diary was ruined when she dropped it in the mud. <sighs> oh, which one is it? I think it's this one. Let's take a chance. <clears throat> yes. Chad wants a video game like hers. Yes, it must be this one. Hers tells us the video game belongs to that girl. Are these our baseball? Are these our baseballs or theirs? Theirs. Yes, it must be theirs. Number four, because this, you know, it belongs to them. My drawing won an award in the contest. My drawing. The word my tells us that the drawing belongs to me, so it must be this one. Ooh, I've got a good feeling about this test. <laughs> Mommy's going to buy me shoes. The keys on the table are yours. Yes. Yours tell me the keys belong to that person. Our favorite place to drive is in the country. Sure. That's a difficult one. Our favorite. Our, 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 our. Our tells me, our tells me, this is our place. 
our favorite place. Let's try that one. Or do you think this one? No, 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 let's not do that one. Um, our favorite place in the, in the place to drive in the sky. In, let, let me try to drive in, in, I think in. Let's try in, let's try in, in. Okay. The dog wagged its tail at dinner, tail, dinner time. The dog wagged its, its tail. I think it's its. Because its tell me the tail belongs to dog. Yes, yes, got that one. Yeah, is your hockey. Ah, that's an easy one. Your. Okay, because the, your tells me the hockey stick belongs to that person. My brother lost his wallet at the football game. My brother lost his. His. What do you think? At. At. At football. His. His, 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 it's his, because it's talking about the wallet, and he's tell me the wallet belongs to my brother. Yes, let's go with his. I got a good feeling about this one. Okay. Our goal was to help the children learn to ice skate. Our goal was to help the children to learn our... This is the same. Look here. Number six and number ten is the same. Ooh, I don't know. Um, our goal was to help. Boys and girls, shout. Maybe I can hear you through the camera. Our goal. Okay, the goal is ours. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. So let's look at the answers. I hope I get this one more marks. Okay. Number one. Let's see. Where's the answers now? Okay, here it is. Her. Oh, I got that one. Okay. Number two. Let me just, I must just make sure that you can read. Okay, there you can read. Let me bend this over. We as teachers, we always improvise. There we go. Now you can see the answers with me. Number two, Chad, Chad wants to, a video game like hers. Okay, hers, yes, got that. Number three, are these our, are these our baseball or theirs? Oh, it's our and theirs. Okay, I got that one, but this one I got wrong. <gasps> Is, are there sometimes two? Okay, I don't know. Okay, number four, it's my drawing. That one is right. Number six, where is number six now? Our, oh, it wasn't this one. It was wrong. Oh, I skipped number five. Number five is the keys on the table are yours. Okay, there we go. That one was right. And then number six that we almost skipped, that difficult one, our favorite place to drive is in the country. It was our, I got it wrong there. Number seven, let's move up to number seven. Number seven, the dog wag its tail at dinner time. Let's see its, ah, oh, number seven, I got it. I'm like Ronaldo, I don't miss. Number eight. Here is your hockey stick, your, yes, I got that. And number nine, my brother lost his wallet at the football game. His, yes, got it. Oh, and my, because it's my brother, I didn't get that one. And then, last one, number ten, our goal was to help the children learn to ice skate, our so let's see, there were 12 answers. Let's see how much did I get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I got 10 out of 12. Whoa! I got 10 out of 12. That's not bad. So now I can say, I know possessive nouns, but this one, can you see our, our, 
I must really work on that one. So if I see an exam, our girl, our house, our dogs, I know that the word our is also possessive. And which one did I also miss? There was another one that I missed. There's another hour. Can you see? Woo! I must write here, hour. Never forget hour. So maybe, so maybe this afternoon, I must do, I mustn't watch Netflix. I'm going to do some sentences about, that starts with the word hour, and I'm going to put, some, uh, put the word hour also in the, in the middle of a sentence, any sentence, and then I know that I will never forget that hour is also a possessive noun. So, boys, this handout and girls, this handout that you got from, from the department, it's a very, very good handout, and I would ask you that you look through it, and if you don't have this handout, you can ask your English teacher at school to find you this handout. It is for free from the department and you can print it and there's a lot of questions in it. But just be careful, boys and girls. Like I said, like I said, please don't um, look at the answers. Do what I did. I first learned, then I did the questions, then I um, looked at the answers and then I marked myself. Okay, so that is the lesson for today. I just want to switch back to the camera so that I can at least say bye to you. Okay. Okay. There we go. I'm struggling technically today, this afternoon, but it was such a pleasure to be with you and to work with you through um, the nouns. So the most important nouns that we have to know, it's, uh, it's your personal nouns, it's your possessive nouns, and your demonstrative nouns. Remember the example that we start with, that we started with? These nouns are like substitute players, they are on the bench, and the nouns is playing the match. And now and again, we're going to use some of those substitutes, those, prono those pronouns sitting on the bench to replace the nouns. And it's just there to make things look more interesting and to change our strategy. Okay, God bless. Have a good test series and a good exams. Ash Steenbock.